I'm Patricia, and this is Investigating Vegan Life with Patricia Kathleen. This series features interviews and conversations I conduct with experts from food and fashion to tech and agriculture, from medicine and science to health and humanitarian arenas. Our inquiry is an effort to examine the variety of industries and lifestyle tenants in the world of vegan life. To that end, we will cover topics that have revealed themselves as common and integral when exploring veganism. The dialogue captured here is part of our ongoing effort to host transparent and honest rhetoric for those of you who, like myself, find great value in hearing the expertise and opinions of individuals who have dedicated their work and lives to their ideals. You can find information about myself and my podcast at patriciakathleen.com. Welcome to Investigating Vegan Life. Now let's start the conversation. Hi, everyone, and welcome back. I'm your host, Patricia, and today I'm so excited to be sitting down with Anya Marus Pakula. Anya is the CEO of Ferron. It's a vegan luxury brand. You can find out more about it and Anya as well on her website, www.ferron.co. That is F E R R O N.co. Welcome, Anya. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm excited to climb through. We were talking before we got started and um, I really love both your company, the ethos, the philosophy, as well as the product. I'm kind of like I'm nerding out on it. I'm a little obsessed. I'm going to have to get myself um, one. But before we get to all of that, I will tell everyone who's listening who hasn't listened to our podcast before, I'll give you a quick roadmap in which our inquiry will be based today. And then I'll give you a brief bio on Anya before I start asking her all of our wonderful questions. So our roadmap for today's inquiry will be, um, we'll first cover Anya's academic and professional background. And then we'll look at kind of unpacking her vegan story if it hasn't already come to fruition within the academic and professional background. Then we'll turn to the logistics around Ferron, um, namely the who, what, when, where, why, how of the company. And then we'll turn to the philosophy and the ethos based um, around it and and all of its endeavors. We'll get into the vegan nature, um, the UK where Anya is based out of, um, the differences, and then some of the stylistic choices of her products, things like that. And then we'll talk about future plans and also just particulars with the vegan story as it pertains to Farron and Anya in particular. So as promised, a quick bio on Anya. Um, Anya is a sustainability and waste reduction advocate with a passion for working with people and building relationships. She's the CEO of Farron, a vegan luxury designer brand that enables her to be creative and talk about things that are important for her sustainability, cruelty-free lifestyles, and empowering women entrepreneurs. Um, When she's not working or researching ways to lower her negative impact on the planet, she's usually busy with rescued babies, um, with her rescue babies, her four-year-old Beagle, uh, Harrier, Oscar, and three-year-old Husky Cross, I'll have to get into those names, Maya, who love exercising more than she does. She volunteers at Launchpad Reading, um, organize and attends meetups in the reading and and London area, and she travels whenever she can as well, which is a little put on hold, I'm sure, right now. Um, Anya, I'm so excited to climb through everything that you do and um, everything <laughs> that you have kind of postured here. But prior to getting to that, I'm wondering if you can kind of walk us through your academic background and early professional life um, at, but as it led to launching um, Ferron. Sure, yes. Um, thank you. So, um... Uh, to be completely honest, my um, education and um, um, early kind of experience, uh, job experiences, um, have absolutely nothing to do with what I do at the moment. <laughs> um, so I am Polish. Um, I moved to the UK. Oh gosh, uh, way too long now. Um, and then I um, went to university. This was my dream country, basically. I liked the challenge. When I arrived, I didn't speak any English. Um, I went to um, a community college, got the uh, English language lessons. Um, That took me about a year to be ready to enroll into what was, again, my dream um, of journalism uh, with criminology. So I finished um, the the, the, the degree. Um, And then it kind of, of, I moved from job to job and then I ended up um, uh, working in HR. Uh, and as much as la- as I like some bits, some parts of the HR role that I've been doing, 
uh, it was too structured for me, if you will. Um, uh, mind you, it was an IT sector, so obviously everything is kind of fast paced and moving. That's what I like the most. Uh, and then, yeah, meeting meeting people, meeting various people coming from um, different backgrounds, different cultures. That's what I kind of um, I appreciated at the time. But um, I always kind of knew that this is this is not it. I've been doing a lot of um, outside work activities that kind of led me to um, explore the sustainability and vegan uh, passion more and more. Um, and yeah, the the way I kind of ended up um, launching Ferron is just by luck. I met this uh, beautiful um, couple that that care about the animals um, and were never for you know for a cruelty um, that fashion is sadly intertwined with uh, at the moment so uh, we came up with the idea with the product uh, they've done a, a lot of legwork uh, for me too so I have to mention that um, unfortunately um, they kind of their, 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 their personal circumstances um, have changed, and they weren't able to um, dedicate as much time and resources into the brand. So, um, after careful consideration and obviously discussion uh, discussions with my husband, um, I decided to buy the brand fully, and so effectively officially of the last last year april Ferron is is um is my uh, my brand my and <laughs> only brand yeah originally pardon when was it launched originally Ferron? it was launched in 2018 um march 2018 uh, that's where our first baby came out <laughs> <laughs> Nice. It's yeah. And those first five years, there's so much transition that happens within most. Oh. You know, it's all about staying flexible, right? For the pivot, that keyword pivot. Um, I yeah. kind of climb through Ferron um, and its attachment to its its vegan values and the sustainability that it sounds like it already was. But before we get there, do you can you describe? So, are you yourself vegan? And how did you attach? How did you know that you wanted to? Um, or, or how did all of the people that began the project understand or know that they wanted to make sure that it was sustainable and um, vegan in nature? So um, I come from family that was obsessed with meat uh, and, and uh, not only in terms of food, but also animals used for um, fashion. So I, I vividly remember, and uh, bless her heart, I love my mum to bits, but it was a, this old fashioned, old generation of people where she would, uh, she would be making sure that all the investments she does is it's in leather because it's high quality, it's, uh, it's versatile, it's obviously, it's um, um, uh, more kind of sturdy and you know it's going to last us for a longer time longer period of time than the, any synthetic uh, material and I just I don't know I think I was very empathetic sympathetic um, child always and I kind of I never agreed with with usage of animals for for the sake of fashion or anything really so um I'm I'm vegan at the moment, yes, but I've I've it's not I've I've been vegetarian most of my life, but I transitioned to veganism probably around three years ago, um, and and that was a very conscious and very obviously adult driven decision. It was um, I I just I just knew that I had to do that to move even further from veg being vegetarian to uh, vegan. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to come at it. And it sounds like you have a several in your own personal story. You know, a lot of people come at, um, particularly some of the younger generations coming up right now, um, you know, generation um, I, or whatever we're going to name them, as well as generation 
ahead of them, but there's been a lot of people that come at it from the accountability and sustainability. And I think some of the older guard, and maybe this is too general, but um, come at it or you came to the vegan lifestyle from compassion, you know, from these kind of animal rights moments that were happening and really big in the 80s and 90s when they were hitting their genesis. But um, it doesn't really matter how you get there. I think it sounds like you have a combination of this, you know, empathy and compassion for animals, as well as this, um, you know, this huge push that you have in your every day life towards um, sustainability and, you know, and being um, yeah. proactive in conservation of the earth and its resources. Um, I'm curious when you, so let's unpack it really quickly. So everyone who's listening, so it's a, um, it's a vegan luxury designer brand and it's, um, you mainly deal with um, handbags, correct? Correct. Um, so at the moment it's um, an online store. So it's, um, it's a designer um, uh, bag. So yeah, I, uh, I'm um, constantly in touch with, with the designer of the bag. So, um, uh, and, and we actually at the moment, oh, we, we only have three, different colors is the same design in three different colors obviously we're hoping to grow uh, and expand on our designs but at the moment uh, this is just one uh, classic piece uh, it's our signature collection uh, and hopefully we'll be able to grow from here yeah I love it I was talking to you before we started and um, because yeah. I have a, a history in fashion photography and I've had um, fashion's my my safe space where I go to explore and have fun, and that includes handbags and accessories and things like that. And, um, and people who follow a lot of my podcasts know that I'm I'm nothing short of a fan of Stella McCartney, both in her clothing and handbags. And for a long time, she was kind of one of the only major designers that was overtly, you know, vegetarian and had vegan products. Um, and so, but we were talking about the classical, I love the style of your, I have to say the signature crossbody in camel is such a, it's bull, it's so in one. And I love things that are classic and iconic, like the Coco Chanel era, and yet so contemporary, you know, your lines are so clean and um, everything is so, and here's my tie in with, with vegan and that, because I feel like a lot of designers, um, clothing and accessories who deal in um, leather substitutes or leather like materials become very scared of that kind of modern clean line because they're terrified that the um, that it will be perceived as immediately not leather or you know sub um, sub leather and I love that you guys kind of took that full on you know not only in in kind of being this luxury design but also this minimalistic where imperfections do show you know that's that they say if you want a really great paint job um, don't put anything on the walls or the floor and look at it because it's like, there's nothing to hide anything, you know, and the same is true with design. And, um, and I'm wondering how that, how that's been perceived and also how that kind of has been received. Like, you know, if you go on your website, you see that you guys have an attachment to Vogue and things like that. How is your reception since hitting the market been? Uh, no, I, ju I just love what you just said. Yes. So, the idea was to always to go for a time, timeless staple and very versatile piece. And I think we managed to do just that. Um, um, and to date, um, I've been receiving a really good reviews, not only from our customers, but also from the people that um, have seen the, the bag. And um, um, I think, the one of the bestest compliments that, that we've received today, it was the fact that um, um, a cobbler, um, uh, um, um, a person that, you know, he's been working in different industries, different, uh, not maybe industries, but he's always been working with the leather. And he, he actually said that he, um, he thought that it is leather. It's just so well made. And um, the material is super, super, um, uh, durable as well as beautiful and it gives you this um leather like uh feel to it so um I, I love everything about the bag and the fact that you can um unhook the strap and use it as a handbag or as a crossbody or a shoulder bag and i think um i think everyone kind of uh, uh, appreciates the versatile versatility of it yeah, it, it it has that. And it has both masculine and feminine qualities. I don't mm. know if you guys 
labels like that. Um, however, you know, if you were to kind of denote the classical, you know, masculine and feminine, it has both like classical brands did, you know, Chanel in particular is always coming to mind because it was a very structured look and that was usually used for men, you know, and, and, to, and to have that come in and also represent the women. And I love that for your, um, your pieces, they feel incredibly versatile and that they span, you know, this new, um, awakening we're having regarding, you know, gender and fluidity and all of that. Like it just speaks to all of those things so well. And I like the simplicity in not having too much of a variation right now. I think people branch out into too many, you know, too many versions of something too quickly. And yours, it really does um, just kind of exemplify it. Um, you can tell I'm a fan. I'm wondering when you went to <laughs> your product, that, uh, the materials that you did, were you involved in that process? And if so, what did you kind of um, sample? Like, what did you consider before you landed on the material that you landed on? And can you tell us a little bit about that material? Um, so material that is used at the moment is PU, and I'm not going to be uh, lying it's a synthetic material so it's not the most sustainable one at the moment uh, and there are different material you probably know that there are different fabrics being uh, developed and being uh, sort of um, not developed and also trialed um, and I'm more than happy to explore other options um, for the future handbags and different designs um, for Ferran. However, at this stage, I must say that um, when we kind of decided on the materials that we use um, for the bags, we just knew that we, that the most important part uh, part for us um, at the decision um, at the decision um, in the decision process was to make sure that uh, the material is kind it's, it's it gives you the luxurious feel and touch to it and that was the that was that was and we did sample a few other materials uh but we just we were quite disappointed with the whole look and we actually made some samples out of the materials that we sampled and um the end result wasn't as um as beautiful as Ferran is today um but again, I'm, I'm conscious, I'm very conscious of the fact that uh, PU is not, not the most sustainable material and uh, I'm happy to explore some other options um, in the and future. And this is the time. I mean, I think, you know, that's, it's cool that you're being honest and open and 10 years oh, yeah. is kind of your only option. And now, you know, people are still playing around, but you've got pineapple leathers coming out, apple leathers, like it's a great time to, you know, be able to consider it and really sample the market and switch when you feel comfortable. Um, I'm curious about like the hardware and things like that. What, did you pay great attention? Because when I think of luxury, I think of those details, you know, that Birkin bag moment. Um, Birkin, obviously not being something I own or it's not vegan. It's just a very, very um, classical, iconic, you know, handbag that people think of. And it's the Birkin hand stitching, right? That everybody talks about those very tiny details. Um, and for, for me with, with your brand, I think that the hardware would become very thoughtful. So can you tell us a little bit about that and um, how you guys are sourcing that as well as your production? Is that happening in the UK? Is it being outsourced to overseas? A little bit about that. Uh, yes, so we went through a great deal of uh, research in terms of the hardware because um, uh, the, the bag is so simple that, you know, the hardware, we knew straight away that it's going to stand out. It's just going to stand out. So we, need, we needed to make sure that it's, um, um, it, it, it has this luxurious look as well as the rest of the bag. Uh, so we've sampled quite a number of hardware um, uh, um, details, elements. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was a long, long process as well as the logo uh, itself. So I don't know um, if you know this, but we do have a logo of our uh, of Ele elephant, um, and we kind of uh, that's linked with the charity work that we do. So we do support the Sheldrick Wildlife uh, Trust, where we um, donate ten. 10 pound of each uh, back sold to the uh, uh, orphanage in Kenya, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, and and we, we love collaborating with the, with the charity. They, 
they they do such an amazing uh, job. But uh, let's move to the materials and hardware, uh, etc. So, uh, so the bags are actually manufactured in China, and again, that I know that that's very disappointed to some of their customers. I actually had some people contacting me and um, saying that they're not going to be supporting a brand that manufactures in, in China. Uh, and I do understand it. And and myself as a customer, I would be concerned and I would be doing a thorough research about the brand. Uh, but what I can tell you, I can, I can promise you that Myself, as the ex-colleagues, we made sure we made the trips to China to our manufacturer sites. Um, we made sure that not only our uh, the factories, the, the manufacturers are vegan and don't use any um, animals derived products, uh, but we we just wanted to make sure that we get to know them and we are in contact with them and. We appreciate what they do for us because let's face it um, it is the most economically um, logical um, point of manufacturing um, the products at this stage um, again this is something that i'm more than happy to explore investigate and potentially move the factories um, that we use into europe um, and i've done some research and this might be something that I will be um, investigating very soon, but at this stage, it's it's China. Yeah, absolutely. I on your website you talk about Farron, um, the name actually being Latin and meaning iron gray hair or one who is yeah. dressed in gray. Um, yeah. How does that tie in to the brand? What is the communication there? Um, so we always wanted to give back to the charity that supports uh, supports um, uh, orphaned uh, elephants. Um, so that was, if anything, that was the starting point for us. So we always wanted to make sure that uh, the, the brand evolves around elephants, giving back, um, spreading the message about vegan and more sustainable lifestyle um and hence the name um again i was uh, a lot of uh, research and investigating and voting and <laughs> uh but we came up with with the uh, with the brand name and i i honestly i do love it it's it's kind of it's strong it gives you this yeah. simple message and kind of bold boldness of the you know of of what we want to present yeah, the world. I think it ties in beautifully with um, with the image on the label as well as this. Um, it's a very simple line drawing that is your your logo or, um, if you will, of the elephant. I think it's all very beautiful. You have a blog on your site. I feel like um, this is where you kind of really connect aside from the materials and things like that. You, you talk about, you know, different um, vegan aspects that are environmentally affecting things, how silk is made, you have different posts and things like that. How do you uh, decide what is curated, like what, what makes it into the, your blog or not? And do, do you yourself compose it or do you outsource that? Um, so I compose it. I compose it. I, I very often collaborate with other people. So um, I believe that the uh, the blog post that you actually mentioned about silk, I kind of I wrote that with um, another lady. She has her own um, brand. Um, she's in um, uh, um, um, organic cotton um, clothing industry, if you will. Um, so yeah, I do. I kind of do my research. I go online and I see what what is the most viewed kind of um, and researched. Um, um, uh, what are the most researched terms for uh, vegan fashion in general? And I uh, research PETA website. I go to my absolute guru. Uh, you probably know him. Uh, Joshua Kacha, he's a um, um, he's a men's menswear fashion brand owner, brave um, gentleman. Uh, so I I I reach out to other uh, vegan fashion entrepreneurs um, for kind of um, inspiration, um, 
because I think that we're in this together and the more we spread awareness about veganism and sustainability, the better for the world in general. Uh, so, so yeah, I, I honestly, I do believe it's a teamwork. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. I'm curious about what the scene over in, um, in the UK is in London and different areas of the UK. Uh, mm regarding fashion that is vegan in the states it's becoming um it's over i would say over the past at least five years it's kind of not just blossomed but taken off you know and it's it's due to all of these different areas the conversation about long before covid19 pandemic um took over there was a huge conversation particularly in fashion in the united states about um really being accountable you know, and, and talking, having those conversations about sustainability, being more transparent about fashion, like littering the landfills. Um, designers started doing a lot of what you um, did with your brand, which is kind of going down to very few options and then being classical that could stand the test of decades as you know, you don't need to buy a new handbag every year. This is the one you can have for a decade, you know, hand down to your, your sister or your daughter or something, your friend. Um, so those kinds of conversations really started taking over. Designers that weren't vegan had those conversations because they, they, you know, they were being asked the questions. And so I'm curious if it's the same in the UK, if you've seen the trajectory kind of spike with people being interested and also with people wanting to own items that were um, eco-friendly and sustainable and um, vegan and accountable for not impacting the um, animal kingdom. Yes, yeah, so it's a very, very good question. So um, uh, I opted in for the for the vegan bags because, um, as I did mention uh, before, I I I just wanted to save the animals from being the victims of the fashion vanity and th like a thoughtless pursuit of 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 staying on trend. So. Um, it's it's shocking to think that you know our desire for uh, for cheap clothes, um, our desire and kind of sense of entitlement to feeling that we can take someone someone's life in the name of fashion, is just horrendous. And whilst I'm seeing, I'm noticing a a, a big spike in there's, there's there, there are more and more people that are happy to invest in organic food and cruelty food and vegan and, and plant-based food there's still i believe there's still uh, quite some times quite some work to do around clothing and fashion in general don't get me wrong there are uh, fashion shows um so last year um uh, in august um Baron was actually uh, one of the participants of the uh, bear fashion show it's a it's the only uk um uh, vegan fashion show and there are uh, uh, exhibitions and shows and pop-ups coming up every now and then but i think uh that yeah that in terms of their clothing in general and and fashion vegan fashion there's still some legwork to do and believe it or not um uh, quite recently i had a lady contacting me um she she emailed the the mailbox and um she said that she loves the bag she loves the look of it she loves the design um but at this price point she prefers to buy a real leather bag and and you know i didn't respond i just didn't because i got very upset not by the fact that she doesn't want to invest in Farron, but um, that kind of defeats the whole point of investing in cruelty free fashion you know yeah um and maybe i should maybe in in a while when i'm kind of i'm going to cool down i will respond and to you know provide a a structured answer because and that's that's what i mean it, it, people they don't necessarily think about how something is made they just think about the price and let's face it if we um you know if we, we need to be be ready to spend a bit more for something that is environmentally friendly and um yeah 
I agree. I completely concur. And I feel like that's why Stella McCartney and people that have come out as, you know, as being vegetarian and vegan brands are so powerful because it is still luxury. The, the price point is still designer runway. And, um, and I don't think that there, the continuity between, in fact, there's a divorce from it in a lot of industries where you get something environmentally friendly, it's, there's more labor it could, because it's new, you know, things haven't come down in price. There's not enough competition and things of that nature, but it's also um, caring shouldn't be free. You know I mean? Like as far as like with efforts that we put into things should mean something to us. And I agree with that. I think attributing a lower price point to non-leather is absolutely silly. I think you should, you know, perhaps pay a touch more for that new effort and things like that going through. Um, that's neither here nor there though. I'm wondering what do you see? So this obviously with the pandemic, this has changed for a lot of people. And um, I'm wondering if it's changed for you being a solely online enterprise, perhaps, and perhaps not. Um, what is the future for Ferron? Do you, are you going to expand on designs? Are you going to keep it where it's at? Are you going to expand into different marketplaces? You're available online. Um, does it ship from the UK? Are you going to try to get a United States presence? Is that down the road or not at all? How, what are the future plans for Ferron? Um, so I never wanted um, Ferron to just be an online store, if that makes sense, or oh, one collection even. So I really wanted to be a, a part of a bigger uh, picture of the change in fashion industry and you know the Stella McCartney this is this is this is my guru too this is an a, amazing example of how uh, things should go in fashion um, so I'm, I'm hoping that I'm on a good path on doing that on expanding so uh, I'm, I'm planning on um, expanding the brand with more designs um, to really offer more kind of scale up uh, model um, and then the plan is to obviously um, do the wholesale, wholesale and distribute much larger quantities um, at the moment we only an online store um, however we are we are part of a few marketplaces um, around the world actually we do have some marketplaces um, in the states and I might say that uh, majority of my customers, uh, funnily enough, they come from United States, um, especially Canada, which I'm very curious why that is. Um, so yeah, I'd love to open a, a, a boutique in London too, who knows? Um, but at the moment, um, I think I'm being a very positive person, so I'm not trying to jump ahead and you know dwell on things, but uh, Unfortunately, I think that the, the current situation will kind of impact the, my plans and, and I'm going to have to brace myself and, and be more patient, which I'm struggling with. <laughs> yeah, well, absolutely. I think everyone is. Well, I yeah. thank you so much for talking with me today. Um, we are out of time, but I really appreciate you kind of um, unpacking Ferran and um, what it's doing and just all of your honesty and transparency. I really appreciate it. And um, I, I hope all of the success in the world for, you know, your future vegan endeavors with Ferran. And outside of that, I'm, I'm very proud to have sp spoken to you today. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a real pleasure. <laughs> Absolutely. And for everyone listening, we have been speaking with Anya Marus Pakula. She is the CEO of Ferron. It's a vegan luxury brand. You can find out more and purchase those items on www.ferron.co. And until we speak again next time, remember to stay safe, eat responsibly and clean, and always bet on yourself. Sláinte.